there was a gentleman on Fox News. And I don't want to give him too much credit, so I'll just show clips of him and what he was talking about. And I can't believe I'm going to use him as a referencing point, but he talked about this wokeness that has been going on and what it will lead to and cause. And I'm going to show you him explaining how he spoke about it and show the clip of when he mentioned it. And this is the society we live in today. Let's check it out real quick. And I will go on with what I wrote that I sincerely feels that it should be evoked throughout these YouTube streets. Hello, America. Welcome to Fox News. Tonight, I'm Lawrence Jones. For the past four years, I have traveled all across the country covering America's crime crisis, mostly in progressive cities. People from all different backgrounds are afraid. And I have one simple request for our leaders to protect us, do what's essentially their only job. But for years, these people have been ignored. They've altered their lifestyle and the way they move for their protection and their families too. Recently, I noticed somewhat of a change and I expressed it here on Fox. I warned that vigilante justice was coming. This isn't anything new with what we've been experiencing for almost like two years in the country where the crimes have become more brazen. It, it is very clear that the criminals aren't afraid of law enforcement. As this continues in the country, that we're going to have vigilante justice, and we can't have that in a civilized society. Someone is going to fill that void, and there will be vigilante justice, and we don't want that to happen. But the leaders aren't doing anything about it. The mayors aren't stepping up to the plate. The DAs aren't stepping up to the plate. The judges aren't stepping up to the plate. So who is going to do it? And that's where that vigilante justice comes into play. Look, I didn't say that to brag or be right. I genuinely wanted to be wrong about this issue. But this is just basic science. When government creates this kind of void, someone or some idea will fill it. No intro. We're just going to get straight into it. I'm not that angry. And I just wonder, are y'all angry? Everyone has had and definitely will have something to say about the regretful demise of Jordan Neely. I don't want to be here to add another number to the fake outrage mob. Listen, I wrote a piece after reading other articles and opinions of many. I needed to get myself right to come here and deliver my thoughts coherently, professionally, empathetically, but mainly reasonably. I needed to properly deconstruct what I already had in mind on this entire situation. If you will have me give you another angle to take this in, this latest racial talking point, I would sincerely ask you all to have the restraint and patience and buckle down to receive this raw, gutter, drawn out message that I took time to bring to this platform. I would like to first start off with Jordan Neely's death is a representation of the inevitable looming death of this masquerade we call a society. To reference an example, the Cahokia Mounds State Historic Site is the site of a pre-Columbian Native American city directly across the Mississippi River from modern St. Louis, Missouri. This great city, perhaps the greatest in North America, rose, flourished, fell into decline, and was ultimately abandoned. Civilizations die in familiar patterns. They exhaust natural resources. They spawn parasitic elites who plunder and loot the institutions and systems that make a complex society possible. They engage in futile and self-defeating wars and then rot, the rot sets in. The great urban centers die first. 
falling into irreversible decay. Central authority unravels. Artistic expression and intellectual inquiry are replaced by a new dark age. The triumph of spectacles and celebrations of the crowd's pleasing imbecility. Just imbeciles, y'all. Just as in the past, countries that are environmentally stressed, overpopulated, or both become at risk of getting politically stressed and of their governments collapsing. When people are desperate, undernourished, and without hope, they blame their governments, which they see as responsible for unable, which they see as responsible or unable to resolve their problems. They try to immigrate at any cost. They fight each other over land, the most simplest things. They kill one another. They start civil wars. They figure that they have nothing to lose. They become terrorists, or they support or tolerate terrorism. Each time history repeats itself, the price goes up, reminding us that industrial society is a suicide machine. So as this nation declines, where propaganda cannot mask the obvious, violence dramatically increases. With the unfortunate death of Jordan and the elements surrounding it, the fiasco that it will become will bring out the usual suspects. Suspects like race hustler and black community bleeder Al Sharpton. See, Sharpton called for Penny, the former Marine and Caucasian who used a chokehold on Jordan Neely for 15 minutes to be charged in relation to the incident. While speaking at the National Action Network Saturday Action Rally in New York, Sharpton, or Charlatan, said that the veteran needs to be prosecuted. He added that he had spoken with the DA's office about the fatal chokehold, and Sharpton told the DA, this man, Penny, needs to be prosecuted. Because what you will do if you do not prosecute him in his judgment is you will set a standard of vigilantism that we cannot tolerate, Sharpton said. The precedent alone is a threat to us all, he hollered. A threat to us all. Oh, really, Al? A threat to us all, huh? Let me be honest with you, GATV family. Jordan Neely was dead even before the Marine Corps veteran choked him to death for nearly 15 minutes. Jordan was already out of life before he hit that ground on the subway train. Modern America in New York and in this entire nation designates some categories of people as socially dead, part of an underclass that is subject to exclusion, indifference, or even outright hatred and violence to be black, destitute, homeless, and mentally ill in our city is to be one of those outsiders, existing in a kind of internal exile from society's circle of care, or as I say, given a F, given a F. And concern, because we don't, we don't care. I don't have food. I don't have a drink. I'm fed up, nearly screamed in the final minutes of his life. I don't mind going to jail, getting life in prison. I'm ready to die. That's what Jordan said. It seemed to be a complaint shouted to the heavens, aimed at nobody in particular. I honestly don't think nearly seemed like he wanted to hurt anyone. But the doomed man's words were sadly accurate about the choices he believed New York and America offered, which was prison or death. That was his reality, reality. As the local tragedy became quickly national headlines and international news, the city's politicians began to squabble. Jordan Neely was murdered. Jenny from the block, Representative Alexandria 
Ocasio Cortez, aka AOC, tweeted, calling the killing disgusting. We must not become a city where a mentally ill human being, the same one y'all ain't give a damn about, she says again, where a mentally ill human being can be choked to death by a vigilante without consequence. See, that's the blanket statement they give y'all, without consequence. Or where the killer is justified and cheered. Hasn't this already been happening with killers killing all types of people, particularly the black community, taking children, men and women from homes, jail? The lynch mob was the day. They seized the day. Gave picnic pictures, and this is the rhetoric they're feeding out today. Where the killer is justified and cheered. Is this new? The Democratic coon, Mayor Eric Adams, by contrast, complained that Ocasio-Cortez was jumping to conclusions, Adams said. We cannot just blatantly say what a passenger should or should not do in a situation like this. And we should allow the investigation to take its course. See, that's what's funny. Because that same coon mayor had a seemingly understandable wait-and-see attitude to the whole matter, except, except the mayor's attitude today, or rather to today's standard, is in stark contrast to how he reacted to the killing of Austin Simone, or as some would say, Simon. I can't pronounce this brother's name properly, but Austin Simone, inside a Harlem bodega back in 2022. In that case... A dispute over a bag of chips that escalated and led to the store clerk, Jose Alba, stabbing Simon to death. The mayor rushed to the scene days later and held a news conference outside. And he said at that time, my heart goes out to this hardworking, honest New Yorker that was doing his job in his place of business where a person came in and went behind the counter and attacked him. Neely, it seems, had encountered many of the clinics, hospitals, and social service organizations we collectively and op optimistically call a social safety net. Employees from the citywide mobile crisis outreach team brought him to a hospital or shelter five times in 2020, five times. But the city's web of social organizations is ludicrously underfunded and badly lacking in quantity and in quarter coordination for Neely. They didn't help him. They didn't help him. The alternative to social services, in Neely's case, as in so many other people out here, the alternatives to social services was the NYPD or police departments in your local neighborhood? In Rutgers Island. All of you that claim to see are the ones who vote for puppets like Mayor Adams. You elect characters like him who was eager to pronounce Alba honestly. He, Mayor Adams called Alba honest and hardworking before any investigation and is now unable or unwilling to speak with concern or compassion about Neely. Adam dismissed Jordan, as the many of us do with the many Jordan Neelys around our blocks. Adam should have ordered a review of all city agencies that interacted with Neely over the years. That was at a minimum he should have done. See? That review should have been from the health department to the NYPD and the Department of Corrections. And then all of these officials should make the city's $107 billion budget conform to the level of need. But well, we got all these issues going on. But none of this will let the rest of us off the hook. And your fake rage and emotional acting, you will revolve back to your distractions. Others watch and even help Penny hold Neely down while they race hustle and trigger you by blasting the name and images of the white man 
involved, many of you may have missed the two black gentlemen holding Neely down as well. Race hustling doesn't want the entire picture to be seen, the entire story to be told. How can I arouse your already narrow view of this reality? This is what happens when the sight of the distress becomes so common that it is both fearsome and exhausting. Honestly, many of you didn't, don't, and won't care about the Jordan Neely's of the world. We look the other way, mother about crime and quality of life, and ignore the fact that we as a society are taking the cheap, easy way out by condemning some of our neighbors to a kind of walking death and hoping we avoid the consequences. What effect does this modern societal climate have on democracy? Fake news, political polarization, the effect of social media on politics has never been so crucial to examine. Even with all these countermeasures, the battle will never end. It is written in stone, I assure you, this society that has been your playground will come to an end. Misinformation campaigns are not amateur operations. They are professionalized and designed to constantly try to game you with its system. Some of us call this the matrix. We will always have more work to do, not knowing where this work leads to. But I ask you, how many Jordan Neely's have you in your own family? How many Jordan Neely's do you walk by every day? There are many alike who have met similar fate. Except it was not by the hands of an ex-Marine who happens to be Caucasian. I've had Jordan Neely's in my own family. I wonder even with the efforts I made to help certain individuals, was it enough? So while they throw game at us with this George Floyd 2.0, who will prevent the next Jordan Neely? Who will come clean up the mess? Who will stop aiding the agendas most of the politicians push that you all vote for? I only ask you this before you go on your BLM crusade, before you try to out outrage another soul, and continue to ignore the Jordan Neely's right in your own neighborhoods, I ask you, are you really angry? Finally, rest in peace, Jordan. Your bleeding heart bleeds no more. You aren't invisible. It's a shame it took death for a lot of these folks to know you. Moonwalk into the light that awaits for you. That darkness is no more, which I would love to see one day. This is GATV signing out. I don't care if you like, subscribe, or share. This was for you to listen to and ask yourself, who are you? Are you your own person or does the media control the narrative in your brain? Do the work when there's no cameras around. There are many Jordan Neely's floating and gravitating around a lot of us, man. Do the work. Do the work. And if you don't want to, fine. But cut the bullshit, man. Cut the bullshit. This was gravitating away. Hopefully you took this sincerely coming from my heart. It took me a while to wrote it and really think about what the hell I'm saying. Unlike a lot of people rushing to judgment who don't care about, again, the many Jordan Neely's all around. I sincerely hope you all stick it out with me. If it's love, I want everything. Touch my soul, touch my heart, don't judge my mental. They told me that life is simple, been real since Papa Pimple. I started out in the rental, Sonata, the presidential. Speak once and listen twice, they told me that less is simple.